Warning, this video contains images and voices of people who have passed away. Wey, nyoro valya, kule laya, ngelo wari yang ganjara, mana nyoro yang ganjara wangga bay, cukur ban yang aja, ngan bawa wangga, cukur dah jara, valyo. There were an estimated 250 languages that were spoken on this continent prior to the establishment of Australia by European settlers. In addition, there were around 600 dialects. There is not a consensus about how many indigenous languages are currently spoken. No one knows the exact statistics on indigenous languages because people have debated over this endlessly. However, it has been thought only a fraction of the original 250 indigenous languages are still spoken daily. Linguists estimate that 160 indigenous languages are currently extinct, 70 are under threat, and only 20 are likely to survive in short time. There's a famous saying um, that a, a language is a dialect with an army and a navy. On technical grounds, you can't always tell the difference what's a language, what's a dialect. If languages are, what they say, mutually understandable, so you'd say that in a way Pitjantjara and Yapanjara are dialects of the same language because they can understand each other. Yeah. Whereas Arabana is a different language because those speakers can't understand Arabana, Arabana, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that way. So you test on how close they are, but other tests are more the political. Linguists believe that indigenous languages are not being practiced as much in communities and other places by younger people. This is because they are tending to speak more English than their native language is no longer their first language. English takes over Aboriginal languages. In many missions, indigenous people were unfortunate as they were prohibited to speak or learn in their native language. As a result, many of these languages have become extinct over a long period of time. Well, there's one called language shift, and that's when a group of people shift, say, historically here in Australia, yeah. those West Coast mob shift to English. So then people stop speaking Murning or Kugara or, say, Wurrungu. They kept speaking yeah. Kugara, kept going because of, you know, Yalata people, Uldia people, and desert peoples. But, um, they shift, so they just stop speaking it. They don't, they, they don't, and the kids don't speak it. So that that's one of the main uh, mechanisms for it. Um, you can have um, loss of population, loss of speakers, or you can have people just not speaking it and not passing it on. So that, that's one of the main ones we talk about. <laughs> In many cases, languages have been documented by missionaries, linguists and anthropologists. Missionaries tried hard to document the languages in order to understand one another and to convert people to their religion. For example, Bidendera was recorded by the Presbyterian missionaries when the mission was established in Annabella in 1937. This mission was different as it allowed children to learn in their own language. <laughs> Chukurba Pala Tihana Pazana Ka Niri Nahada Manana Malangu Mandelbae Niri Ala Nagula Wangadikitabu. The Ghana language became extinct for almost a hundred years and has recently been revived from the document of only two thousand words recorded by earlier South Australian missionaries. From this, linguists were able to revive the language. This is in contrast to Bindara, a language which has many books, dictionaries, a grammar, 
and thousands of video and audio recordings. Do you think it's a good idea that it is preserved language over time? Absolutely, yeah, because it's not just language. When you talk about language, you're also talking about culture and identity. And it's been seen over and over again that people that lose language lose a strong sense of that culture and identity. Um, and you think about, you know, you think about pidgin data and the idea of chukurpa or the law. Yeah. If you lose the language, the language is how the chukurpa or the law is um, transmitted from person to person. And so if you lose the language, you lose chukurpa. And that, you know, that would be devastating for, for Anangal people as a whole. Um, and I think not just for Anangal people, I think for people like me as well. Um, because we lose, you know, when a group loses their language and identity, everybody loses something because we can all learn from each language and from each group of people. They all have something to share with us. Yeah. And if you lose that, you know, it's a, it's a real tragedy, I think. There has been an endless debate about how many indigenous languages are still spoken in Australia today. There were 250 Aboriginal languages present to the arrival of European settlers, but there has been a rapid decline in these indigenous languages throughout Australia. There are dirty strong languages that are still spoken daily, and over a hundred which are critically endangered languages that have been recently revived are most likely different to how they used to be when they were actively spoken. I personally believe that keeping languages active is the most important thing to Aboriginal people because speaking your own language clearly gives you a sense of identity. My language is Yangunjara, a strong language that is spoken in my everyday life. Maybe it will change over time. My hope is that all indigenous languages over Australia remain strong and active because if we lose our languages, we also lose our connection to our homelands and the world as we know it. Anjuli Angulam